What's up everyone? So today's gonna be um, my experience. Wait, why am I wearing my hat? Today's gonna be my experience video with the Sony a7C. I've had this camera for around six months now and I'm actually recording with my a7C but this video is really gonna be my experience video. I'm gonna try to keep it short. Everything's gonna, everything's gonna be in the description. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the intro and let's get on the video. Yeah, my experience with A7C and honestly, it's been very good. And I'm pretty much gonna tell you why I sold my A7, my A7 III for the A7C. Man, I feel like I'm gonna mess that up a lot. But why I sold my A7 III for the A7C and there's five big reasons, but I'm gonna start from the most important reason why I switched up from A7 III to the A7C to the least and cover some uh, cons from switching from the a7 III to the a7c later in the video as well. So number one, the autofocus is a lot better. And when I mean by autofocus, I mean by the touchscreen autofocus. I like it so much more than um, playing with the dials on the a7 III. So autofocus from a video perspective, it's just so much better. Number two is it's unlimited recording time. And with this A7C, yes, it does record 4K for more than one hour. But what I've had, my, my experience with A7C is that because I've started recording podcasts with A7C and I would record, I would record podcasts back to back in the same day. And in my first recording, I would be able to record 4K for one hour straight. It would go, I think it was one hour and 14. But on my second podcast recording, after one hour of shooting that one, after like a one hour rest, so I, it was from one to 2 p.m. I did the first podcast, and then from uh, three to 4 p.m. I did my second podcast. It actually started shutting off during the podcast around 40 minutes in. So the first, po first time I recorded the podcast, it was actually fun, but the second podcast from three to 4 p.m., it started, uh, it started overheating at 40 minutes and I actually had to turn it off and change it to 1080p to keep recording. And I think it's because also uh, it was quite hot in the podcast room. However, if I had the a7 III, it wouldn't been able to even shoot at 30 minutes in 4K. Well, it would cap at 30 minutes in 4K. But with the a7 III, it would just overheat a lot. Back when I had the a7 III, it even overheat on regular video shoots I would do with the a7 III. And that's why I I couldn't really, I would, I would always find myself stressing recording in 4K with the a7 III. I would stress that like, oh, like I might, it might overheat and I might miss the good shots later on in the shoot. That's one reason I switched to a7C. But with the a7C, yeah, in 4K, with my experience, you have to still be, you have to still be careful. But yes, it is better than the a7 III and for me, it's still a plus, it's still better than the a7 III, and it's still something I can trust over the a7 III. So that's one, another big reason why I still like the a7C and I'm going for the a7C. So number three, um, flip out screen. Yes, um, for a lot of people, for me, it's very important, but I won't really cover that too much. For me personally, I use it a lot. I like it more than, um, I like it a lot for shooting portraits because I like shooting in um, vertical mode and I like being able to flip out the screen if I'm going to shoot low angle or higher angle. I like how you're able to adjust that. With the a7 III, you can't adjust the screen properly when your camera is in vertical mode. Also for gimbal work, a flip out screen helps me a lot. So the last con last pro with this well not con the last pro i have with this is the extra features and the extra features it has is the gyro data so gyro data allows you to stabilize your footage by all but like it, it just it, it, it just surprises me but it crops in the footage a lot so i actually don't use this feature as much i thought i would but a lot of times i shoot my 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 video in a tripod when needed and if i do want that natural shake i just record with my hand but there are some times i did use gyro data on top of my gimbal shoots just 
just because I needed that extra sta stab stabilization. And honestly, it's very good. Gyro data in here is really, really good. And it's something that the A7C has and the A7 III doesn't have. And to be honest, it's something I don't really use that often, but it can be very, very useful for some people. But for me, it wasn't that useful. I don't really use that much, but it's just a, it's just a cool feature to have because at each clip, each recording clip has that gyro data automatically. And it's just, it's just cool to have and that the A7 III didn't have. So I see myself using it a lot if I end up traveling a lot, but right now, I, I kind of like the handheld smooth shots and if I do want stable shots, I use the gimbal, but yeah, also the gyro uh, software, it's kind of long to use if you want to quickly gyro, if you want to quickly stabilize, 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 if you want to quickly stabilize like 10 or 20 clips, it takes a while. It's a lot, it's, it's, it takes a while to do that. So. I only used it when I had to stabilize one clip and that's it. I didn't even stabilize any other clips. So now the con. So a lot of people can say this is a really bad con and I, kind of, and I completely understand it. And it's the lack of dual card slots. But for me personally, when I had my a7 III, I didn't even use dual card slots, to be honest. I, I'm pretty sure when, when I had the a7 III, I only used one SD card, even though it had two card slots because my cheap self didn't want to invest in another SD card. But at the same time, I had no problems with it from my two years of using cameras or even from my years of using cameras, I never had any errors with my dual cards or I, I never had any defects with my SD cards. So for me, so another con is that it's not professional looking and I feel like a lot of people would say that and don't get me wrong even to me I've had I've I've felt that a little bit like I felt like I would be going to shoots and I would be bringing the A7C and I just felt like it's not as professional looking but so many times a lot of people don't really question you as long as you showed your past work for me showing my past work has helped me a lot and moreover, the clients I work with are long-term clients. It's not clients I just work one project with and then that's it, I'm gone. It's mostly sometimes I'm, I work with them for one project and I keep working with them further on. If not, they just keep me in contact and whenever they need a video, they just message me. So a lot of times they find my work from past, they find me from past work. And a lot of them don't really care what gear I use. They just see my work and they want that exact same thing in their type of video. So a lot of times video gear doesn't really matter. And if you do, if you are a little bit worried about your camera not looking professional enough, you can always get extra gear. I would recommend um, um, this muffled ND thing. I'm gonna put it in the screen. So I ended up buying something more professional looking and that is the uh, Polar Pro Basecam Madbox. And it is awesome. Let me tell you this thing is awesome it looks really professional and in a world where the video cams are getting smaller and smaller like the a7s3 it really looks like a photo camera so clients sometimes are just like whoa i got a camera that looks just like that it can be a little weird for them to see such a small camera on the like bigger productions so but i don't really see the need i i would say my lenses make it look professional already um but a lot of times customers don't ask for me i always bring i always usually gear it up in a, a gimbal i have a ronin s and that to already looks professional enough but yeah if you're worried about being looking professional enough um yeah i don't know what to say honestly it's not a big deal it's not really worth it you know for all the pros that you're getting to get the a7 III just to make it look bigger i don't think it's worth it so that's pretty much my pros and cons list and my experience with it now i'm going to be telling you guys who it's for and personally i think it's again for the videographers as you can see throughout this video a lot a lot of these pros are related to video aspects so to for someone that that's that's shooting plenty of video 
which is what I'm doing. I don't really shoot photos as much, but with this full frame 23, 24 megapixel camera, it's very good for a photo and the autofocus is amazing. But if you, if you are a photographer and all, and what you mainly do is photos, I wouldn't recommend doing it. I would only recommend if you're a videographer and you're trying to get the A7S 3 Personally, that's what I'm trying to do, but you don't have the money for it yet. So I think the A7C is a very good budget if you're in the middle of the A7 VI series and the A7S 3 If you're in the middle of buying those two, the A7C is honestly perfect. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's my experience with the A7C. If you guys want to see some uh, video samples, it's going to be in the end of this video and in the link down below. So that pretty much brings the end of this video. Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Also, message me on Instagram if you have any additional questions you'd like. I'm going to put it in the screen. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.